Welcome back to this week's edition of Grandma's Cookbook, where this time we're actually doing something for dinner instead of muffins. We're having hamburger macaroni casserole. Never had this before. Or if I did, it was called something else. Or I didn't remember it. Who knows? Anyway, enough of this. Let's get into it. To start with, you'll preheat a pan to 360 degrees. Once temperature has been achieved, you're going to add two tablespoons of your fat of choice. My fat of choice was butter. Once the butter has completely melted, you're going to add one half cup of chopped onions, and you're going to fry that until it just starts to turn brown. Once the brownness has been achieved, that is when you're going to add your one pound of ground beef, and you're going to cook that until it is brown. Once meat brownness has been achieved, you're going to go ahead and add three and a half cups of cooked or canned tomatoes. 1 cup diced celery, 1 half cup cut up green peppers. Then you're going to add your seasonings, which consist of 2 teaspoons salt, 1 quarter teaspoon celery salt, 1 eighth teaspoon pepper, and 1 teaspoon Worcestershire sauce. Then you're going to add your already cooked and drained 8 ounces of elbow macaroni. Stir that all together, bring it to a boil, and cover and turn the temperature down if you actually are able to tell what temperature your stovetop can be put to. Put it to 220 degrees or a simmer and let it simmer for 35 minutes, occasionally stirring it. After 35 minutes, you're going to sprinkle with some chopped parsley if you had any. I couldn't get any. And some Parmesan cheese. And there you have it. Hamburger macaroni casserole. How's it taste? pretty good. I mean, it's just pasta, tomato sauce. I mean, it's almost like a bolognese without the carrot. Maybe it's nothing like it. I don't know. I was very surprised how much the celery came out at the end of it. Could have used a little bit of garlic or something in it too to liven it up and maybe two tablespoons of fat was a bit much. Did say to drain off the excess, but there really wasn't any excess I could find to just drain out of my pan. But it's a good base to start with. And I would recommend giving this a shot with a couple of tweaks through there. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Grandma's Cookbook. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week with some more cooking and booking.